Hi friends and welcome back to my channel, Joyful Jessie. If you are new here, I am Jessie. We are currently in the last quarter of our first homeschooling year. And this is typically the time when people start wondering if for the upcoming school year they would like to homeschool and what are some of the things that they should keep in mind. So in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you guys five things to consider before homeschooling. If you already are a homeschooling family and you have some tips or ideas or things for people to consider before they start homeschooling that you have done and that helped you in this process, please go ahead and let us know in the comments below so that we can all share in this together and just chime in as much as you can. The very first thing, and I think this is like the most important thing, is to think about your purpose. Why is it that you want to homeschool in the first place? Whether it is for spiritual reasons, academic reasons, personal reasons, whatever the reason may be for why is it that you are considering to homeschool, think about that and hold on to that for dear life. That is what is going to keep you moving through and moving forward throughout your homeschooling year. When things get tough, when you hit that homeschool burnout, if you get that winter slump, this purpose is what's gonna propel you. So really consider the purpose for why is it that you're homeschooling. Think about that very, very deeply and hold on to it because that is going to be your driving force. The second thing that you should consider before homeschooling is your state's homeschool laws. Depending on the state that you live in, the laws are different. There are some states that are very lenient. They don't have very many restrictions. They really don't have um, very strict laws. And then you have other states that are highly regulated states and there are laws and there are things that you have to do. For example, I live in Pennsylvania, which is one of those states that is very highly regulated. And in our state, there are certain things that we have to teach. We have to do an affidavit at the beginning of the school year. There's paperwork that we have to submit to the school district. And then at the end of the year, we need an evaluation signed up by a certified teacher. So different states have different regulations and different laws. You should really become familiar with them. If you don't know what your homeschool laws are, simply Google your state and homeschool laws, or you can simply look at this website that is absolutely helpful and just breaks it down by state. You click on the state and it'll tell you what your laws are. So that part right there, my friends, is really important. Become familiar with your homeschool laws to make sure that you're doing everything that you're supposed to. The next one is quite important because it will really guide how is it that you wanna structure your homeschool. Are your children more of a hands-on learner? Are they more of a kid that enjoys just sitting down and reading? Do they do much better if there is a video instruction? Are they more of hands-on? where they learn better when they are learning at the moment with some sort of engaging activity? Do they thrive more in structure? All of these things you need to start thinking about because depending on your children, you are then going to choose what might be a curriculum that will meet your child's needs. For my children, they thrive in structure. When there's no structure, it is really hard and frustrating, especially for my son. He wants to know at what time time is he doing something? When is he doing something? So he really thrives with routines. He wants every day, everything to work out the same way as it did before. He is very comfortable in that type of situation. So when I was looking for a curriculum, I really had in mind, how is it that my kids learn best? What is my purpose? Like the reason for my homeschooling? Because those two really do go hand in hand. And that drove me to the next Thing. So think to yourself, how do you envision your homeschool being like? Keeping your kids and your purpose in mind. Are you going to homeschool and you want faith to be the center of your homeschool? If that's the case, there is a wide variety of curriculums out there that are faith-based 
curriculums like the one that we are using. And it just weaves our Christian faith throughout the entire curriculum. That is something that I was looking for. Is your family more of a literacy based family? Do you just want to get novels and stories and books and weave your entire teaching around that particular book? You can do that too. Do you want more of a thematic approach where you focus on certain themes and you design your lesson plans according to that theme or that central idea or that essential question that you guys are working on for several weeks or a quarter? Are you more of a person that would like some video instruction along with some paper and pencil based things? So you got to think about how is it that you want your structure in your homeschool to go? Do you want there to be a schedule? Do you not want a schedule? A really good friend of mine who is the mom of my son's best friend has always homeschooled and she's always created her own things. And the only thing that she has used a curriculum for is for math. And she uses sex and math because she felt that that is an area that she needed a curriculum for to best meet her child's needs. However, everything else is something that she puts together and she creates together and they go to the library multiple times in a week and they do co-ops and you know they do all these things that for their family works amazingly for my family my husband and i we are both very highly involved in our kids homeschooling so it's a team effort for us the abeka academy curriculum which by the way i am not sponsored by them <laughs> i wish but i'm not so i am a person giving you my own personal opinion of what i really think about it for us, that really does work out very well. We have the video instruction and my son loves that he could just pause the teacher whenever he wants to and go back and re-listen to something if he has to. And my husband works really closely with him, especially with the math, because that's something that my son needs extra support in. So that's really gonna drive you as to what, what curriculum are you gonna use? How is it that you're gonna implement it? You don't always have to pay for curriculum. There's free curriculum out there. I know someone who uses is easy peasy as their curriculum and that's a free curriculum and that's perfectly fine so for me before I chose our curriculum I spent time reading reviews I looked at people's videos what is it that they were finding that was helpful I sampled some of them so I went online I looked at their website if there was a free sample I sat through and I took advantage of that free sample with my kids and see if that worked for them the reason why my husband and I chose the curriculum we chose is that when we actually sampled it my kids enjoyed it and my husband was like oh man that is exactly what school was like for me my husband was homeschooled so he, he was very comfortable with that and when I tried it out with my daughter on the first lesson that she sampled online her counting problem was corrected so that really just I was like oh yeah no definitely we're gonna do this so really just do your homework do your research how much are you willing to plan on your own or if you want the planning done for you and that will help you decide on curriculum and my very last thing for you to consider before homeschooling is to give it a trial run in your house test it out See what works and what doesn't work before you actually start the school year. So I did a lot of testing out with my daughter. I tested it out throughout the weekend, whenever I had a holiday break from work. And with my son, we tested it out that summer. We actually started testing out certain day structures. I started getting him prepared with a cursive. We tested out different ways that things might work so that when we actually started homeschooling, we knew what worked and what didn't work and what needed a little bit of tweaking. And even in our first year, we still struggled a little bit and we still had to switch things around so that it worked for our kids. So test it out, give your kids a little taste of it, see how it goes. It just helps you have a better idea of what you're going into and have an open mind. Be very flexible in your mindset because you are gonna change things. Like I said, you are going to move things around. You're gonna have to adjust things so that your child is not overwhelmed and you are not overwhelmed. 
Well, my friends, those are my things for you to consider before homeschooling. I hope that you have found it helpful. If there are other things that you are currently doing to help you decide, or if you have any questions, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I hope that I am able to answer them or any other homeschooling family that is watching this might be able to steer you towards the right direction. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have not yet done so, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.